recognized. Madam Chair, I yield myself such time as I may consume. The gentleman is recognized. <clears throat> Madam Chair, members, on behalf of America's servicemen and women, our veterans, and their families, it's a privilege for me to present the fiscal year 2010 Military Construction and Veterans Affairs Appropriations Bill. I believe this bill and the work we have done since January of 2007 is work that all of us, Democrats and Republicans alike, can be very proud of. In this time of war, we have continued our tradition of a bipartisan military construction and veterans appropriations bill, a bill that honors in a meaningful way the service and sacrifice of our servicemen and women, our veterans, and their families. In the past two and a half years, along with the passage of this bill, the Congress will have increased veterans health care and benefits funding by 58 percent. That is unprecedented in the history of this country. And I believe our veterans and their families have earned every dime of that funding. Madam Chair, may I ask for regular order, please? The gentleman is correct. The committee is not in order. Members are asked to bring their conversations off the floor and take their seats. The gentleman is recognized. In addition, we have a new 21st century GI education bill. And recently, President Obama signed into law a provision amending that bill. It will provide a college scholarship to every child who has lost a mother or father in military service to our country since, since September 11th of 2001. In two and a half years, this Congress will have done a number of things in behalf of our veterans and troops, including adding 8,300 VA claims processors to reduce the unconscionable backlog that veterans are having to stand in in order to receive their earned benefits. We will have provided funding for an additional 115 VA community-based outpatient clinics, and this bill adds 30 more. We will have provided an additional 42 vet centers, and this bill adds 28 more. We have allowed the Veterans Health Administration to hire an additional 2,657 doctors, 11,509 nurses, and other critical additional staff. We will increase the travel reimbursement rate, the per mileage reimbursement rate for veterans having to travel, in some cases, hundreds of miles to VA hospitals, which had not been increased since 1979. We will increase that from 11 cents per mile to 41 and a half cents a mile. To many in America, that extra 30 cents may not sound like much. To many of America's finest, our veterans, it's a difference between them being able to afford to drive to get the VA care, the health care they need and deserve, or, or not. Our increased funding for veterans in this bill and over the past two and a half years means our veterans have better access to the health care they need and deserve and have earned. It means improved access to health care for veterans in rural areas. And it means the opening of the doors of our VA hospitals and clinics to many middle and low income veterans who had not been allowed the, the opportunity that they had earned through their military service. Additionally, these resources ensure that our veterans will have shorter waiting times for doctor's appointments. We've also worked hard to make sure that our servicemen and women know that Congress deeply respects the sacrifices that they and the unsung heroes of America's defense, their families have made each and every day to keep our nation safe. We've heard time and again in testimony the best support we can give our military when they're deployed overseas is the knowledge that their families are cared for here at home. We've listened to that voice and have tried to fund a number of key initiatives for our troops. For example, in the past year, this subcommittee will have added $2.8 billion for new military hospitals so that our servicemen and women know that their families will get the best possible health care and high quality facilities while they're serving overseas. We've added $1 billion for new child care centers to serve 20,000 additional military children and $570 million in additional funding for barracks because Congress needs to show our volunteer forces from day one that we appreciate their decision to serve. The Subcommittee for Military Construction and Veterans Affairs did not accomplish this alone. There are several key leaders 
that have worked tirelessly behind the scenes to support these efforts. I want to especially commend Speaker Pelosi, who promised over three years ago that if she became Speaker, she would make supporting our veterans and their families one of Congress's highest priorities. Speaker Pelosi has kept that promise to those who've kept their promise to serve our nation, and I salute her for that. I want to salute Chairman Ovi, another one of the unsung heroes in supporting America's veterans, our military, our servicemen and women, and their families. While Mr. Womp and I, as ranking member and chairman of this subcommittee, have often been out front on this, Chairman Ovi has provided the allocations, the unprecedented historic increased allocations for our subcommittee that has allowed us to accomplish many of the, the goals and achievements that I have mentioned in the last few minutes. In particular, above all other things that he has done. I want to thank Chairman Obi for providing a green light and encouraging and supporting and facilitating a historic initiative in this bill, which is for the first time ever we will provide forward funding for veterans, uh, veterans health care funding. It would not have happened without Mr. Obi's support. In addition, Chairman Spratt, not a member of our subcommittee, but the chairman of the House Budget Committee, has played a key role along with Chairman Filner, the chairman of the Veterans Affairs Committee. And finally, but absolutely not least, I want to thank uh, my colleague, my friend, and the ranking member of this committee, Mr. Womp of Tennessee. He has been a partner, a leader, at every step of the way in supporting our troops and our veterans and their families. His commitment to our military and our veterans is deep, it's genuine, and he puts it to work every day uh, by working hard in their, in their behalf. And I want to thank him for his vital role in not only shaping this bill, but our bill last year as well. Madam Chair, let me try to focus, rather than on a long list of numbers, some of the major initiatives in this bill. As I reference, for the first time in history, we provide an advanced appropriation for VA medical care. This will allow the VA to invest taxpayers' dollars more efficiently and more effectively. And I want to thank, in addition to having thanked Mr. Obi, Mr. Spratt, Mr. Womp, Speaker Pelosi for making this possible, I want to salute America's veteran service organizations, the leaders of our veterans organizations who have made this one of their highest priorities. Second, we provide $450 million to build new troop housing for Army trainees over 60,000 of whom are presently living in barracks that don't even meet minimum DOD standards. You know, 18 and 19-year-old military recruits don't have many lobbyists running around Capitol Hill in their behalf, but they deserve our nation's respect and support for their decision to serve in the military. Third, we provide $200 million for Guard and Reserve Construction Initiative, recognizing the vital role these troops are playing in Iraq, in Afghanistan, and in our nation's defense. And particularly, in addition to his other efforts, I want to thank Mr. Womp for taking the leadership role on this Guard and Reserve Initiative. Fourth, this bill begins the process of funding our operations in Iraq and Afghanistan through the regular appropriations process. And we include $1.4 billion for vital military construction to support our troops in Afghanistan. Fifth, recognizing that the mental wounds of war can sometimes be as painful and as long-lasting as the physical wounds of war, we provide $4.6 billion for the VA to continue its improvements in PTSD and mental health care for America's vets. Sixth, this bill includes funding for the 1,200 new claims processors to reduce the backlog of veterans receiving the benefits they've earned. Seventh, this bill also continues to open up, as I referenced briefly, VA medical care to more middle and low income veterans, many of whom had been locked out since uh, a cap was placed on income thresholds back in 2003. Finally, we want to ensure that the, and this is important, we want to ensure that the historic increases for VA health care and benefits, that those dollars are spent wisely. So, and I know Mr. Womp and I share a strong commitment to this. We want to see that every dime of that is spent for the highest priority needs of our veterans. So together we supported increasing the VA Office of Inspector General by $19.2 million 
and we have every intention through our subcommittee of exercising increased oversight of the VA to see that the, these tax dollars are spent uh, effectively and efficiently. Just a few basic numbers. Overall, this bill totaled $77.9 billion in discretionary funding for fiscal year 2010. This is $239 million above President Obama's request and $5 billion more than fiscal year 2009. For the VA, we include $48.2 billion in fiscal year 2011 advanced funding for VA medical services, medical support, and compliance in medical facilities, an 8.3% increase over the historic uh, funding level of 2010. For military construction, family housing, and BRAC, the bill provides $24.6 billion and fully funds BRAC 05 at $7.5 billion. For the VA, the fiscal year 2010, the bill provides $53 billion in discretionary funding. This is $5.4 billion above the 2009 funding and matches President Obama's VA request, which I should point out was the largest increase requested by any president in over three decades. The fiscal year 2010 increase for the Veterans Health Administration is $4.4 billion, which is 11% over fiscal year 2009. Finally, I want to thank people who work every day, in fact, day and night, behind the scenes, without public applause, for our veterans and our troops and their families. Uh, these are the people who make up the staff of the Military Construction and VA Appropriations Subcommittee, and I want to thank them by name. The minority staff, led by Martin Delgado, Liz Dawson, and Kelly Shea, and Aaron Fogelman, and Juan Alvarez from Mr. Womp's staff. And the majority staff, led by Subcommittee Clerk Carol Murphy, Tim Peterson, Murray Arnold, Walter Hearn, and Donna Chavez, and Lindsey Davis on my staff. I would also like to add a special thanks to John Conger, who has recently left my staff to work for our military uh, as an employee of the Pentagon. All of these people have helped continue the long, proud tradition and legacy of this subcommittee to work on a bipartisan, frankly, a nonpartisan basis, always putting our troops and veterans first. And uh, as I say that, I once again thank our ranking member for always uh, fighting and putting first our troops and our, our veterans. With that, I'd like to reserve the balance of my time. Gentlemen from